Let's talk about food labels, shall we? You've read them, or at least you've tried to, maybe. They're full of hard-to-pronounce ingredients, stuff that makes you scratch your head as you wonder, what exactly are you about to eat? But how would you feel if you knew all the junk they packed into processed foods? You may lose your appetite because some of this stuff is, for lack of a better word, pretty gross. We're going to tell you about it with Michael Doyle from the University of Georgia Center for Food Safety. He joins me now to talk about things you're eating with some very questionable ingredients. Great to have you here, Michael. Hey, it's a pleasure to be here, Susan. Okay, while I was reading some of the ingredients in some of this food, really made me never want to eat at least these ingredients that we have, at least the vanilla pudding. Let's first go through what types of foods we're eating and, and why this is going on. I, I believe the story on the pink slime, which we were eating, which was supposed to be meat, kind of set this thing off. Do you agree? Well, pink slime, uh, ammonium hydroxide was added to the meat as part of the process. And people were wondering, why are we putting ammonium or mm -hmm. ammonia into our food? And, yeah, that triggered a lot of response. And what else is in our foods? While I was reading this, it said there should be about five ingredients in a food that is recommended to eat. And, of course, foods that you can pronounce. Remember that Breyers commercial with the little kids kind of reading the uh, X brand of ice cream? And it was very funny. They couldn't pronounce anything. But if you do look on the back of the packages, you can't read half the stuff. And I think it's for a reason. They don't want you to read it. Let's talk about vanilla pudding. Um, it's hard to even say, I'm sorry if you're eating vanilla pudding as you're watching this, but there is secretion from the anal glands of beavers. Is that true? And why is that in there? Well, there's something called castorium that's sometimes added to puddings as well as uh, certain desserts and, and even ice cream because it carries a flavor. Uh, it's uh, vanilla flavor, vanilla, sometimes raspberry flavor. So is this kind of a quick fix that tastes good? It's not harmful to us, correct? The FDA is saying it's not harmful. You can it, eat it. It's not harmful. But it still makes you cringe, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, you think, can't they just put vanilla beans in here instead of that? Let's talk about donuts. All of us eat them. A lot of us do, at least. Donut holes here. There is dissolved human hair or duck feathers in donut holes. Is that right? Well, actually, it's L-cysteine. It's uh, an amino acid that's That important. sounds much more fancy, L-cysteine. It's, it's important to... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, building protein in our bodies. And so it's, uh, it's good to have that in there. Uh, it's important in dough. If you like thin pizza, thin sliced pizza, you have to have something like L-cysteine there, and I, and I have some here. It's important to make it elastic so it will spread out. But it makes you think of the bigger picture, Michael, in terms of what tastes better and what is flavorful opposed to your long-term health. Um, have we found that there's an, any cancer-causing ingredients in a lot of these foods? And it makes you wonder if they'll be doing studies down the road and we find out that these aren't that good for us. I remember the documentary called Food, Inc., where they really uncover a lot of the processed foods and what we're putting in our bodies. Well, many of these ingredients are, are normal, mm -hmm. like the L-cysteine is a building block to protein. Protein is an important part of our body. I'd rather have a banana I think, than a donut. All right, we're going on to the chili. We have to talk about this fast food chili. It's uh, the scientific name for sand is in there. But considering the other two, sand doesn't sound so bad right now. What's in chili? Well, it's called silicon dioxide, but it's largely used in spices and powders to keep it from clumping. If we didn't add the silicon dioxide, it would clump together. And so the chili that's in there is a, is a spice. And the reason we'd add the silicon dioxide is to keep the, the uh, chili from clumping together. All right, the last food we're talking about is shredded cheese. Makes you wonder if they put this on the menu instead of fast food chili, sand, and instead of shredded cheese, wood pulp, is that in here? Well, wood pulp carries something called cellulose. Cellulose is fiber. That's why we eat a lot of fruits and vegetables in large part, because it carries far fiber. It's the same type of fiber. It's the cellulose in fruits and vegetables that's put into... Uh, this type of an, uh, a food. And, okay. and this food would be very, the texture would be very mealy. It wouldn't be as easy to, to carry and put on to other foods. Okay, so the bottom line, do you recommend that people do the research before eating these foods, or you say this won't hurt you, it's just there to make you, it taste better, the food? Well, it, it, it can taste better, it can feel better, it's more enjoyable in many cases, and in some cases it, it costs less. All right, Michael Doyle, thank you for shedding light on what we're eating. And, of course, I keep thinking back to that pink slime. Things are changing because people were now aware of this. Appreciate your time, Michael. Thank hey. you.